Mario Mario, the plumber who has captivated the hearts of millions and is even the mascot of one of the biggest video game companies in the world. Though you may think you know everything about Mario, do you really? Who is the creator behind him? Where has he been showcased? And most of all, why is his nose so big? Okay, sorry, but join me as we dive into the complete history of the one and only Mario. Starting off, we must travel all the way back to 1981. This year marks the first ever appearance of Mario. Well, not necessarily. You see, Japanese game designer Shigeru Miyamoto developed the now famous arcade game Donkey Kong. In this game, we see a short man wearing a blue shirt and red overalls, but his name isn't Mario. In this game, this character was referred to as Jumpman. Jumpman is tasked with running and jumping on platforms and climbing ladders to ascend to a construction site, all in efforts to rescue this girl that has been captured by Donkey Kong. At the end of the game, Jumpman removes the eight rivets holding Donkey Kong up on the site causing him to fall and then is finally reunited with Peach. Wait, this isn't Peach. It turns out in Mario's debut- <coughs> Excuse me, Jumpman's debut game, the person he was trying to rescue was actually Pauline. Maybe Peach just wasn't a fan of his current name. It is now 1982 and the title of Jumpman has been removed. This character was now officially known as Mario. Mario was first seen in the game Donkey Kong Jr. However, he isn't the character you play as. In this game, you play as Donkey Kong Jr. and are tasked with saving Donkey Kong Sr. from the evil Mario scattered across the platforms. Because this is the only game where Mario is the antagonist, maybe he was just having a bad day. Flash forward to 1983, we have Mario accompanied by his brother Luigi in the Mario Bros arcade game. By the way, did you notice how Mario's outfit switched colors? Jumpman was previously known for wearing a blue shirt and red overalls, but now it's the complete opposite. Maybe this was an indication of Mario's new occupation. Yup, that's right, Mario Bros arcade was the very first game to state that Mario and his brother Luigi were plumbers. In this game, Mario and Luigi were tasked with defeating Koopas and other enemies emerging from sewer pipes in multiple phases. However, this game was missing a well-known feature that is seen in almost every other Mario title. Players could not jump on enemies to squash them. Enemies instead had to be killed by headbutting the block below them, turning them over, and then jumping on them. But it seems like Mario was getting tired of only appearing in arcade games. He knew it was time to move on to bigger things. Bigger screens. Gotcha. We now see our favorite Italian plumber in the TV show Saturday Supercade, which would air episodes every Saturday morning, featuring several arcade games such as Frogger, Cubert, Pitfall, and Space Ace, but most importantly, Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. This show aired from 1983 to 1984. In the Donkey Kong segment, staying true to the original game, Donkey Kong would capture Pauline, making Mario have to chase him down to rescue her. 1985 was an extremely important year for Nintendo as we see the release of their very first game console, the Nintendo Entertainment System. With the release of this came Mario's very first console game, Super Mario Bros. This game is now considered one of the most iconic video games to ever exist, having over 58 million copies sold. This was also the first game to introduce Super Mario. Mario would become Super after collecting a Super Mushroom, doubling his size, allowing him to withstand being hit by enemies instead of immediately losing a life. Once Mario makes it to the final level, he has a fight against the main antagonist King Koopa, and after defeating him, Mario can finally save Princess Peach. She was however referred to as Princess Toadstool in versions of the game outside of Japan and this wouldn't change until later on. Though Mario saved Peach, his time on the NES was not complete. In 1988, we have the release of Super Mario Bros. 2. In the previous Super Mario game, it was said that Player 1 would be Mario and Player 2 would be Luigi. But in this game, players had the choice of choosing who they would want to play as. The character selection included Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Toad, each possessing unique abilities. But if Peach was a playable character in Super Mario Bros. 2, what was the objective of this game? Mario and Friends' objective is to navigate through the seven dream worlds of Subcon, defeating brand new enemies such as Shy Guys, Sniffits, and... Birdo? After making it through all the worlds, the last level has you fight against the main antagonist, Ward, the leader of a gang known as the 8-Bits. His goal in this game was to conquer Subcon, which is what tasked Mario with having to save it. So Mario has been seen on arcade machines, home consoles, and even TV shows. What was going to be next for this plumber? In 1989, Mario made his way to Nintendo's first handheld console with the release of Super Mario Land on the Game Boy. Within this installment, Mario has a brand new princess he's tasked with saving, Princess Daisy. This game was much shorter than the previous Mario titles, only featuring 12 levels spanning across four different worlds, where at the end of each world, Mario would fight bosses disguised as Daisy. Finally, at the end of the fourth world, Mario would battle it out against 
to Tanga, an evil alien with the powers of hypnosis. After he's defeated, Mario rescues Daisy and the two of them ride off together in a spaceship while Peach is, I don't know, somewhere punching the air. I however think Mario was getting a little tired of running and jumping between different worlds, defeating enemies, and saving princesses, so he decided to take a little break from the Mario games. Hey, paisanos, it's the Super Mario Brothers Super Show! The same year, we see Mario appear on TV again in the Super Mario Bros. Super Show. This show was based off the Super Mario Bros. video game, so I guess Mario didn't really get a break from the action. This show had 52 20-minute episodes, each of them featuring live segments set in Brooklyn going outside the Mario Bros. universe. Viewers were also treated to animated segments showcasing the adventures of the well-known hero Link from The Legend of Zelda. Going to 1990, the amazing success of Super Mario Bros. 1 and 2 led to the release of Super Mario Bros. 3, also on the NES. They're just throwing every Mario game on this console. Now this game was actually released in Japan two years prior, but became available to North America in 1990 and Europe in 1991. Super Mario Bros. 3 featured various new features that became staples in future Mario games, such as the Koopalings, Tanuki Suit, Super Leaf, Sliding Down Slopes, and a world map to quickly transition between levels. This game was praised by critics for its challenging gameplay and was the third best-selling NES game of all time, accumulating over 17 million copies sold. This game also inspired the animated television series, The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3, produced by DIC Entertainment. This show featured one season of 13 animated episodes, focused on Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Princess Peach and their efforts to prevent King Koopa and his Koopalings from taking over the Mushroom Kingdom. Moving a few months forward to November 1990, we have the release of Nintendo's newest home console, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. The newest Mario title came with this system at launch in Japan, but wasn't available in North America until 1991. So what was this new Mario title? Well, Mario had already been through a land on the Game Boy in Super Mario Land, so what was the next best thing? The world! Super Mario World introduced new elements such as the Cape Feather, which allowed Mario to glide in the air, and the new Spin Jump, which is a feature in almost all 2D Mario games to this day. Following the storyline of the previous Super Mario Bros. games, Mario was tasked with rescuing Peach from King Koopa, but unlike the other games, this game included an astounding 73 levels and introduced the famous green dinosaur, Yoshi. Yoshi's abilities were based off what color he was, blue Yoshi being able to fly, yellow Yoshi able to emit dust clouds that could defeat nearby enemies, red Yoshi having the ability to produce fireballs, and green Yoshi being able to eat enemies. This was a hit game, selling more than 20 million copies worldwide, making it the best-selling game on the SNES. And whenever Mario is the star of a hit video game, he also needs to bring the fun back to the TV screen. Oh boy. 1991 marked the release of the Super Mario World TV show. Unlike the other previous Mario shows, Toad was completely absent but had Yoshi appear as a character instead to take his place. Each of the 13 episodes consisted of Mario and Luigi dealing with schemes by King Koopa and made use of the new elements in the Super Mario World game. You know how earlier I said that Mario moved on to bigger screens? Well the screens just got a whole lot bigger. For the first time ever, Mario made it to the real big screen. The Super Mario Bros movie was a sci-fi comedy adventure based on the Super Mario Bros video game. That's what Wikipedia says, but then can someone explain how this relates to the game? How many Mario are there between the two of you? There's three. There's, there's Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. Mike! Mike! Up these Mario's around the side. This movie follows Mario and Luigi in their quest to rescue Princess Daisy from the evil King Koopa. It should be noted, however, that this was not actually the first time Mario was on the big screen. In 1986, a full-length anime film titled Super Mario Bros. The Great Mission to Rescue Peach was released but was only available in Japan. Meanwhile, on the handheld side of things, the Game Boy saw the release of Super Mario Land 2 Six Gold Coins in 1992. In this game, Mario returns to his private island named Mario Land, where he meets a brand new rival to the Mario franchise, Wario. Wario has captured Mario's castle and used an evil spell to brainwash the island's inhabitants into fighting against Mario. Mario is then tasked with finding six golden coins spread throughout the island so that he can reclaim his castle from Wario and return Mario Island back to normal again. Two years later, the famous plumber was seen on the Game Boy again in Super Mario Land 3, Wario Land, where instead of Mario, Wario is the main playable character, and you join him on his adventure to steal a golden statue of Princess Peach. Coming 
Coming to 1995, we have the release of another Mario game in which Mario is not the main character, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. This game came out on the SNES and Mario is looking way younger in it. That's because Mario is actually a baby in this game and you play as Yoshi with the goal of carrying him back to his parents in the Mushroom Kingdom while avoiding all of Kamek's traps. Not sure who Kamek is? Kamek is the flying wizard who always gives Bowser and his Koopalings magical powers in the Mario Bros platformer games and pulled off one of the greatest fake outs of all time. But we'll get into that later. So we've seen Mario on TV, home consoles, handheld consoles, and even movies. But there was still one variation of Mario that had not been seen in the games. Mario in the third dimension. With the release of the Nintendo 64 in 1996, Nintendo scrapped the sprite Mario and upgraded him to polygons, creating the first ever 3D Mario game, Super Mario 64. Diving into the game, we see the familiar enemy Bowser has gone after Mario again, invading Peach's castle and hiding the castle's source of protection, Power Stars. Mario is set on a journey, jumping into magical paintings that transport him to different worlds to collect these hidden Power Stars, and then eventually battles it out against Bowser to rescue Peach. This game also introduced Mario's iconic voice, voiced by the one and only hey, Charles Mario. Martinet. And of course, we can't talk about Mario 64 without referencing the famous clip where Mario allegedly said, So long, King of Bowser. So long, King of Bowser. I don't know about you, but I hear something else. Bowser must have ran out of ideas for giving Mario and Peach a hard time because it wasn't until six years later we would see the release of a new Mario game. In 2002, the Nintendo GameCube became the home for one of the most loved Mario titles of all time, Super Mario Sunshine. Taking place on the tropical Delfino Island, Mario and Peach are now on vacation enjoying the time away from Bowser's shenanigans. But that's when disaster strikes. A villain resembling Mario known as Shadow Mario vandalizes the entire island island with graffiti, framing Mario for the whole situation, getting him arrested. Mario is then ordered to clean up Delfino Island using a brand new gadget to the franchise called the Flood, or Flash Liquidizer Ultra Dowsing Device. That would be too easy for Mario though of course, so while having to worry about cleaning the entire island, he must also try to rescue Peach from the mysterious Shadow Mario. Players loved the unique gameplay, story, soundtrack, and new Flood device of Mario Sunshine and still praise the game to this day. With the huge graphical improvement over its predecessor, Super Mario 64, Nintendo fans saw that Mario games would just continue to keep getting better and better. We are now in 2004 and have the release of the Nintendo DS, Nintendo's famous dual screen console. With the release of this console came Super Mario 64 DS. This was a remake of the popular N64 game, but featured new playable characters such as Wario, Luigi, Yoshi, and minigames. As well as this, Mario also appeared on the DS in New Super Mario Bros. in 2006, the first new game of the franchise. We'll be hearing that word a lot. Similar to previous games, Peach has been captured by Bowser, this time with the help of Bowser Jr., and Mario must make it through eight worlds defeating all seven of Bowser's Koopalings, then fighting Bowser before finally rescuing Peach. Also in 2006, Nintendo continued to keep innovating the gaming industry with the release of the Nintendo Wii, known for its TV-shaped remote controller and motion controls. With the Wii came new Super Mario Bros. Wii in 2009. I told you that word would be heard a lot. This game followed the same plot as its DS version but added new power-ups such as the propeller suit, a suit that allows you to fly by shaking the Wii remote, the penguin suit, and ice flower. This game also includes the famous scene of Bowser's minion Kamek fooling Mario by pretending to be Peach after he initially defeats Bowser. Poor Mario. Oh. Extending the 3D platformer scene, Mario was also featured in Super Mario Galaxy two years prior. But this time, Mario has to travel between different galaxies. This is all an attempt to collect 120 power stars to save the universe from Bowser. With this 3D game being so loved, Nintendo released a sequel, Super Mario Galaxy 2 in 2010. This game had the same plot as the first one, but with way more creative levels. It is now 2011 and we have the release of Nintendo's fifth dual screen console, the 3DS. Which which allowed its users to play games in 3D without the need of glasses. And with that came a brand new Mario game that utilized this unique feature. 2011 saw the release of Super Mario 3D Land, a 3D platformer which used the 3DS's 3D capabilities to add a cool twist to levels. Here you see by enabling the 3D mode, you're able to see new parts of the level, making it easier to complete. Just make sure you turn the 3D back off when you're finished so you don't get a headache. The 3DS was also home to New Super Mario Bros. 2 in 2012, the sequel to the popular DS game New Super Mario 
Mario Bros. Aside from the typical Mario Bros. plot, this game's main focus was on the collection of coins. No, seriously. There is so many coins in this game. Coins randomly fall from the sky. There's a mode called Coin Rush, where the objective is to collect as many coins as possible. And there's even a golden flower power up that turns everything you touch into coins. Did Wario make this game or something? And for those up to the challenge, after collecting 10 million coins in the game, you would be rewarded with this golden Mario statue, probably made out of all the coins you collected. It's crazy to think that it's been 30 years since Mario's first appearance in Donkey Kong, and it's amazing to see how far the games had progressed. From starting off as a simple arcade game where you had to climb up a construction site, to now being able to explore galaxies in a 3D game, Mario had continued to capture the hearts of many and had no plans of stopping anytime soon. At least, that's what Nintendo thought. 2012 marked the release of the infamous Wii U, Nintendo's second worst selling console only being beaten out by the Virtual Boy. With a console so low in sales, would this mark the end of Mario? Well sadly, yeah. Of course not! You really thought our famous Italian plumber would fall off that easily? Though the Wii U sold terribly due to its poor advertising and name choice, New Super Mario Bros. U released alongside the console was a great new addition to the Mario franchise, featuring new power-ups such as the P-Acorn and Super Acorn. One year later, the Wii U received Super Mario 3D World, and just like Super Mario Bros. 2, you were able to play as Mario, Luigi, Toad, or Peach, each of these characters receiving a new look thanks to the Lucky Bell power-up that would turn them into a cat. Oh, and you would see Cat Bowser during the final battle. So despite the Wii U being unsuccessful, Mario has continued to evolve and be seen in more games. But there was still one key feature missing. From now, though Mario games would have different stories and levels, everything was still controlled by Nintendo. Users had no freedom of what they would want the game to look like. If you had a better idea for a level, oh well, there was nothing you could do about it. That was until 2015 when Nintendo released a game allowing the creative community to finally share their ideas. Super Mario Maker. This was the first game of the entire Mario franchise where you would be the creator of levels. This was such an amazing idea and utilized the Wii U's gamepad perfectly for smooth level creation, but it's such a shame that this game's potential was limited by the failing console it was released on. In 2016, we see Mario make his first jump outside of official Nintendo hardware in the release of the smartphone game Super Mario Run. I remember seeing this game on the App Store listed for free and being so excited to give it a try, only to find out that after completing three levels, I would then be forced to pay $10 to access the rest of the game. I mean, I did of course pay the fee, but I just felt so betrayed in the moment, like Mario had just completely bamboozled me. It's okay though, because Nintendo made up for it in 2017 with the release of the Nintendo Switch, Nintendo's hybrid console that outperformed the Wii U's total sales in just one year. With this momentum, it's no surprise that the newest game to the Mario series was also able to pass the Wii U in total sales, achieving 25 million compared to the Wii U's formidable 13.5 million. This game was Super Mario Odyssey, a 3D game where Mario and his magical hat Cappy venture into various kingdoms, collecting power moons hidden inside of them, all to power the ship used for travel known as the Odyssey. This game received various support from the community, winning several awards and being known as one of the best games on the Switch. The Nintendo Switch also saw releases of previous Wii U games to help boost their popularity, as no one was going to know what these games were otherwise. These games were Super Mario 3D World, with a new extra single player mode called Bowser's Fury, new Super Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, I'm surprised they didn't call it newer Super Mario Bros. U, and even a complete sequel to Super Mario Maker, Super Mario Maker 2. Over the past 40 years, Mario has been seen on every single Nintendo console and handheld to ever release, and it's crazy to think that Mario makes even way more appearances if we take into account the games where he's not the star. Coming to 2023, we have so far seen Mario on the big screen in the Super Mario Bros. movie and are eagerly waiting for the release of a brand new platformer, Super Mario Bros. Wonder in October. Mario Mario has been featured in over 200 Nintendo games, making him the number one character for most game appearances. And for as long as Nintendo lives, that number will just continue to rise. Thank you for joining me in reviewing the complete history of Mario, and let me know if you enjoyed by leaving a like and subscribing. I hope you have a super day. Deluxe.